Did y'all hear that? Piece of condo just fell. Whew. All right, guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, what we're going to talk about is F clips. Now, how do you work these and what are they? Is there another name for them? I mean, let's talk about them. F clips are mainly used for boxes like this metal boxes. There's many names for these F clips, steamboats, which I'll show you in a minute, Madison clips. Um, I can't really think of anything else other than. Uh, I think that's all, that's all I know of anyway. Yeah, drop me a comment down below if there's uh, other names for these. Now, the reason why they call them steamboats, first of all, let's talk about how you get them apart. So basically what you do is you just kind of twist them back and forth. All right. The reason why they call them steamboats is because it looks like a steamboat. And I guess the reason why they call Madison clips is because maybe a Madison brand was the first one that makes them. I don't know. And of course you got the F clips because it looks like a letter F, no matter which way you look at it. So, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to put this box right here into this piece of sheetrock right here. Now, you see all these holes right here? In case you guys are wondering what in the heck went on here. All right, look up here in the corner. There is a video coming up that shows you different boxes I've used to put in here. It's on a playlist, you guys can check it out. Uh, Feel free to watch it. Um, shows you how to use boxes with screws already made into them. Also shows you how to use a box with a metal bracket already made onto it. And then something called a smart box. So if you want to check them out, definitely do that and look. But today we're going to be talking about this box right here. First thing we need to do is prep this box because it comes from on a ship or it comes in a truck or in a van or wherever. And you can see that the ears right here are all bent to heck. So we're gonna to have to go ahead and we're gonna to have to fix that. So the best thing to do is to straighten them out. Take your pair of Kleins or Lymans, whatever you wanna call them. All right, and we will get them straight. Now, another thing we wanna do is make sure that they're level with the box, because if they're too far down or too far up, you're gonna have problems, all right? Now, these need to be adjusted. Can you see right here at the end of my fingernail where the box and the clip end and meet? Well. Obviously, they're not lined up, so we're gonna fix that right now. So, there's little screws on the back here. What we wanna do is loosen them up. Isn't it funny how some people say unloosen? If my voice sounds a little crazy, it's, I just had COVID and it's getting over it. So we will, and I've been doing video after video today, so I'm very hot and very dirty. Okay, now they're level, both sides. So. We want to make sure that they're all good and tight. And before we put this in here, there's going to be much debate on grounding and bonding this box. You can use the self-grounding receptacles, but I still recommend putting a ground piece of screw in there, if not the wire, and then grounding your box to your Rumex coming in or your EMT coming in or whatever you're putting in here, Flex, MC, whatever. But I recommend putting a bond screw in there, bonding your ground to this box, no matter what. That's just my opinion. Um, like I said, you can get away with it by code by using self-grounding receptacles, which we're not gonna do. We're not even gonna put a ground screw in here because I wanna show you the fundamentals of putting this into the, into the wall. Now, when I did these videos, I didn't use this right here, but today we're gonna use it. I've used this in a previous video. This is an electrician's friend. Some people think it's stupid to carry it around. Some people think it's dumb. Some people love it. I prefer it, actually. I think it's super handy to have. And what you do, basically, is it has its own levels on the device. So you don't have to carry a level trying to get your box level and blah, blah, blah. So basically, this is a two-in-one. So for this application, you see it's, a, it's got two different pieces on here. For this application, you would have to take and push this out and pull this off, okay? That will basically be this right here. Because when you're cutting this box like this in, you do not trace the whole entire box. You only trace the outside right here, and you go up and around this screw and then back down. So this ears right here is what holds your box into the sheetrock. Now, if you were cutting like this, a, um, a regular box in, uh, like a plastic box or whatever, you would just snap this right back in here, and then you'd put it on here, and you would just draw literally around this rectangle here. So I will leave a link down below to this thing, guys. Um, 
I suggest if you do buy one of these, either leave it in the pack or put it in something uh, that will not let it get you know screwed up. Uh, I try to keep this in a little, um, one of those waterproof boxes along with some of my high-end meters. So I don't have to worry about it breaking the levels or bending it or knocking the edges off. So I'm gonna take this over here and show you how to use this thing. It's so easy, so helpful. And uh, we'll put this in the wall with F-clips and you guys will be on your way. First thing you need to do, obviously, make sure you know what's behind your wall. That goes without saying, right? So we'll just pop this right here out. Get your pencil out. And we'll just cut it in right here. So we'll say that's about right, right there. So all we do is we literally just trace this around. Looks like so, so easy. Always use a pencil because if you ever run into a stud or something, you definitely want to move it. And if you have Sharpie on the wall, oh well. I think we already know what's gonna happen there. Your wife is gonna be mad, or the homeowner. Okay, that's what you have right there. So we'll just have to, I forgot to draw that little piece, but close enough, right? This is not pocket science here, guys. Now, I'm gonna show you this cool little tool that I have. This is Milwaukee. It is a, say it's not Milwaukee, this is a Milwaukee drywall saw. You can put any blade that you feel like you want to in there. I really like this blade a lot. I mean, this drywall saw a lot. So let's go ahead and cut this out. Now, do you see what's left? I left a little, I'm gonna call them tits for lack of better terms. I left them there because you couldn't cut them out like I did here. Or you can just, when you're done, just what I like to do is just do this. Just kind of, and then same goes here. You just come up and you just shave it away a little bit. Same with this one. All right, same with this one. All right, now let's dry fit our box to make sure that it does go in. And then we'll pull it back out and we will if we need to fix it, we will. All right, so this one here needs to be fixed just a little bit. All right, might be too much, but close enough. I didn't even do this side, I don't think. All right, should go in now. Okay, beautiful fit. So we know it's in there. So now, what we have to do with these F-clips. Now, I've been taught two different ways to put these in. Nothing is set in stone, so if you feel like what I'm telling you is wrong, do it the way you want to. But I like to put them in so that one, see how they're both facing the same way right now? So you can look at this part right here. See how it's different than the top part? I like to put them in so that one's facing this way and one's facing this way. So you have the long end down on one and the long end up on one. So that's basically what it'll sit there in the wall and do. It'll be just like that. That's the way I like to do it. Some people will tell you it doesn't matter and it truly does not matter. But why not make it the strongest you can possibly make it? My opinion. Now, what's the easiest way to put these in? Well, this thing is t cut very tight so you're just gonna have to be very gentle and just kind of push it in there. And you can always tell your orientation by the way that this thing here is cut. I don't know if you can tell again, but this is on the top right now. See how this thing's straight and thing's got a little lip on it? All right, so you just push it in and then pull it in tight like that. So all you're doing is just put it in and you're kind of working it and it'll go in because this is angled to go into the sheetrock and kind of go in. As you can see how it's rounded. When you're going in, it's gonna go, whoosh, go right in. So we know that this is at the top, so we want this one, at least for me, at the bottom. So I'll do the same thing. 
I'll kind of work it in there a little bit and I'll hold it down here at the bottom and I'll just push it, push it in, and then work it in. There. Now we're in. Now what I like to do is make sure that these ears that are hanging down are at least up a little bit out of the box because we want to keep this as tight as possible. Now, for this demonstration, not everybody has a pair of needle nose, but a lot of people do have Leathermans. So I'm going to use Leathermans. I use these a whole lot. All right, so what we want to do, the easiest way to do this is to make sure that your box is in there good and tight. So we know that this thing is set where I want it. So we want this edge not down right there, but we want it up so it's up out of here and it's inside the box at all times. We're gonna push the box in with our thumb. Obviously your, your wall shouldn't be this flimsy, but this is just a fake wall, obviously. So we're gonna do, it doesn't matter what side you do first. I'm just gonna do this side first. So we're gonna make sure the box is good and tight and we're gonna push the box in and we're gonna pull the arm out. So push in and pull. See how I'm pulling? And what we're gonna do when we're doing that is I'm going to fold this over. Same with this one, all right? Pull. It's hard to do, I'm trying to keep it out, keep in frame. And we're gonna push. And we're gonna take our needle nose, or our Leathermans, and we're going to just give it a twist, or give it a, a pinch. Same with here, all right? Just like that. Same with this side. Once you get one side in, the other side goes pretty quick. All right, we're gonna push. And we're gonna do the same thing. All right. And then we're gonna take our needle nose and we're gonna twist, pinch. I keep saying twist, but pinch. And then your box is in there and it's not coming out. All right, there it is. It's in the wall, it's good and tight. It's basically everything that you guys need to know about F-Clips and how it looks when it's all said and done, how tight it is. I'm telling you, this is a sure bet. I would recommend the ground screw and I also would recommend on this taping up your device. Usually I do not, but when you have F-Clips, I think it's a very good option to go ahead and do. So guys, if this has brought any clarity to you or you learned anything new, definitely hit that thumbs up, guys. Uh, check out the playlist for these other boxes and this panel and anything else I have going on on my channel. If you want to see what happens next, guys, make sure you like and subscribe. God bless, and we'll see you on the next one. Have a great day.